Ah, the French champagne. I, I just want to say he, that he I, while we're still on story, mm-hmm. I actually had no idea that this was, that Braveheart was based on any historical events Ooh. at all. That's all right. fun. So actually. this is this has been a very informative segment for me. So thank you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should read about how the English king Edward the First was absolutely not considered a horrible person and is actually like a really beloved fig- figure in English history because he basically unified what we now know as England. Who's this? Oh. The, the, the bad guy king Edward the, the Longshanks guy. is not a historical villain at all. He's a pretty cool well, guy. But the I mean, son... let's, let's let's say like he was a king in an era where might yes. made right. So he was an absolutely yes. he's a person. very successful war leader. But like he was beloved in England at, in his own time. But also they they should do a movie about the son who really was it like it like we have pretty reliable records that he was gay and that also he was basically persecuted off the throne by his french wife mm-hmm. and her allies and that he was murdered in seclusion with a hot poker and that's where we're going to leave that for the podcast purposes yes. but the uh, edward the second is a really interesting historical figure too and the movie mm-hmm. really kind of does him dirty as just portraying him as weak yeah and sort of gay being a byword for weak and mel is just ever so Ever so hetero people's sexuality. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that Mel Mel couldn't understand why people found the king throwing Philip out the window funny? He was like, I don't know why people think that's a funny death. I I don't understand. When Philip gets defenestrated. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I Did didn't think that funny? I didn't find it funny. funny. Do you find that funny? It's I mean, absurd. It's, 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 it's a yes, bit it's absurd. absurd. It's a bit it comical absurd. because the yeah. king's like, perhaps you could show me with the, and it's borderline like, ooh, yeah. Yeah. ooh. yeah. And then well, he's on the ground straight up in co- Wiley Coyote position. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guards all like are over him and then they all yeah. like scatter away like little. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, might, as well, a bit, might as well hold up a sign saying, oh no. Adventure movies. Yeah. It's suddenly like a, like a American made Jackie Chan movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think well. a lot of the scenes with the the nobles in the in the castles were pretty over the top for me. Like some yes. pretty cheese ball stuff going on. Yeah. Um, like the the evil king is like so evil it makes him sick, and it's like he's so homophobic, and his, yet his son is like so over the top, and like everybody's up to a million. I mean, not that anyone was subtle ever. I guess that's more acting. You mean the son like walking around with people carrying a mirror for him, being like, yeah, stop, yeah, and it's stop, like a minute yeah. wait. A minute after they were like, convene my council of war. And then a minute later, he's like. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, Well, that's been some hearty, uh, hearty debate and education, apparently, uh, all around. Sorry. Um, No, no, no. It's good. Good for me, too. Again, I I don't know a lot about this either. Um, I'm learning lots, too, Dan. Well, we'll we'll have you two uh, as guests on Brendan's and my podcast, uh, (laughs) Medieval Scottish History from a Canadian Perspective. I'm sure sure it'll be more popular than this one. Damn it, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, end of round one. So, going into round two. Looks good. Begin. Oh, where do we start with looks on these two movies? Uh, how about the Mortal Kombat 2 CGI for the dragon? You know In what? 1995. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was 96, first of all. Thank you. But you're welcome. It was for um, sure done in 95, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll fight about this later, Brendan. But I think that. <laughs> um, yeah, for 95, 96, I thought it looked pretty good. There were moments I... where it was. It was straight up cartoonish, but yeah. for the talking. most part, when he's talking and when, when he's, he's like talking. readjusting I, his jaw, I think the talking was really well done. The, for the, most the part. lips, the, lip the lips were synced and, up and really well. Yeah, I thought it was I good. Thought, I think and if you I, take him as an animated character, like if you don't look at him as he's supposed to be photorealistic, which I mean, obviously, yeah. in a world of at, at the time, they wanted us to think of him as he's supposed to be photorealistic. But if you look at him now. He's a great looking character. He's really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. totally. And kind of to Jack's point earlier, it's hard to criticize the looks of the dragon in Dragonheart when you look at it through the lens of it being a movie for kids. Right? They're not dumping. Yeah, I mean, they true. probably dropped quite a bit of money into making that dragon because for the oh, time yeah. it looked pretty Most fucking good. Most of the good. budget, clearly. 100%. Yeah, it was just <laughs> it was just building the dragon and paying Sean Connery. Yeah, in that, in that cave set. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, bang shot with all the gas hoses. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. But even but even the uh even like having other char- other characters interact with the dragon and like placing them in front of the dragon like it a lot of it seemed more or less seamless especially for the time. 
I thought them talking yeah. to the dragon was mm-hmm. usually pretty effective. Like I bought them in scenes, having conversations like both Quaid and um, uh, Julie Christie, who plays the queen, had a had a scene with them towards the end that, yeah. that I thought I bought. Like I was I was watching a scene. Yeah, the, I, I think this is definitely the film that George Lucas saw in 1996 and said, now's the time I make my prequels. <laughs> The technology's there, baby. Great. So that's a point against this movie? <laughs> is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> I Look, I'm not saying that the, what you're saying is true. And it, like the, the talking was synced up well. And it like, you know, not even just synced up. It like matched his voice pretty well, which is a whole extra thing that takes a lot of time and attention and care. I would argue those two things are the same thing. <laughs> What's no, the no, difference no, between but, his no, voice being synced no, up and his I don't voice mean, I don't mean lining match- up? I'm, but I'm not saying lining up. I'm saying it matched the voice, mm. like that, because you can have it. You can have a mouth um, match the the like the words being said, but it doesn't fit the voice that's behind the word. I see what you mean. I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and I thought they did a pretty good job with that too. Like I, the like Sean Connery's delivery was evident in the animation of the dragon's face. I I thought so too, and we see him um, using his chest a lot too. Like mm-hmm. and, and dovetails into Connery's vocal performance, but like the dragon's breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that, that doesn't change that the look of that dragon's mouth is super weird. It's it's that funny thing where you well, make a thing that's but not. It's not a dragon. Be... It's not a dragon that like we've been conditioned to look at through like Lord of the Rings and other popular dragons that we we grew up like Aragon, Aragon, yeah, and that kind of stuff. It's it's clearly their own like interpretation of what a dragon's like skull. And looks they've like. made the face pretty anthropomorphic, so it can emote. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. But that's what I'm saying. It's that yeah. anthropomorphic nature that actually pushed it further to me into the uncanny valley whereas like mm-hmm. all the other things that you're mm-hmm. talking about i i agree with you how it fit into the surroundings and and the anim- and like the and the animation of it in general and stuff i bought it was when they tried to anthropomorphize the <laughs> the dragon's face mm-hmm. that i was like Gah! like 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 mortal kombat 2 like so- i'd be like i'd be thrown back into I, I mean, I guess to compare it to the like the other great like voiced over dragon that we could probably go to is like um, Benedict Cumberbatch as Smog, um, who's there being fully mocap. It really is him. Um, and they kept it much more like beak like, and it's like it doesn't really. But the, like then it's a big monster, and it doesn't look like he's talking anymore. It won't look so much like it's Sean Connery coming out of the dragon. Yeah, we're deep in the uncanny valley. There's no question about that. Yes, we're yeah. still exploring but, the possibilities of CG animation. Yeah, and I guess all I'll say on on this subject is, I've never seen a real dragon, so I don't know that they oh, didn't you nail it. Daniel, you have didn't you, know Braveheart you? was based on William Wallace, and you have never seen a real dragon. No, I've never seen a real dragon. Where, no, where come with me? I got I got a guy. I got a guy. It's fine. Read is it like book. a live dragon? Yeah, I got a dragon guy. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay. You, co- well, you come over, after? I'll bring it. Yeah. Great. No masks. I want to go with those dragons. <laughs> <laughs> no masks. No masks. <laughs> no, no masks. No, no, except I, on I, the I, dragon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Citizen Game of the Week is 